What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So the biggest topic going around the Overwatch community right now has been the matchmaking. And honestly, it's been like this for quite some time. Matches have felt like they've been kind of one-sided and how you've been kind of put with these teammates that maybe should not have been on your team. Plenty of other creators like Warren and J3 have also spoke about how they've been getting diamonds on their team while they're in GM lobbies. And in many cases, they're low diamond. But with that being said, game director Aaron Keller has blessed us with some amazing news regarding the matchmaker and how it's going right now and what they plan on doing down the future. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like on it. Let's go ahead and hop right into the video. So two weeks ago, they gave us a blog update about balance in matchmaking. And as I stated earlier, the matchmaking is something that's kind of been talked about since Overwatch 2 launched. They do want to make it known that they don't want to try to sound like a broken record, but they constantly say we're working on it and it's getting better when it isn't for some people. They express that they kind of understand the frustration between every player. And at the end of the day, one thing I want to put out there is I really enjoy a company that's at least willing to communicate with their player base let us know what's kind of going on on their end, what they're seeing on their end, even though it may feel different on your end, this is the data that they have and what they're working with. Not only that, to share that data with us is, in my opinion, something that is really very nuanced and something that doesn't really happen often. So I just want to go ahead and say, like, props to Blizzard. If any one of you guys are watching this, I do appreciate you guys at least communicating. But moving on. So in the past week, they've made some changes that have brought down the skill difference between players in a match significantly for high and low MMR matches. I will say that when season three started, it did feel like I was getting much tighter matches and then something drastically changed to where it just felt like the matchmaking was honestly just all over the place. Like I was getting the craziest teammates. I was getting blown out way more. It was honestly worse than it was in season two for me. What they did is they provided us this graph to show us the rank skill difference between players and you can actually see where those spikes happen where it, for me like i said the matchmaker just fell out of place you could see where it spiked up so where the skill difference was so vast but with some changes that they've made recently they've been able to bring down that difference to just about where it started for season three and again this is something that i've also felt uh, as yesterday, I had probably one of the best rank sessions that I've had in a while. So for a little context, if you are a high MMR player, which they classify as GM players and above, roughly about half of the matches are arranged between four and five divisions as a difference. 25% of the games are between five and six divisions. And the absolute worst case, worst case scenario, 1% of your matches are going to have roughly about a 10 division difference. Now that kind of speaks to what I was speaking on earlier, you know, where Warren and J3 have shown that they've been getting diamond players, like low diamond players on their team. And that's appears to be a 1% case. Um, but when you have so many players playing so much, like I myself have, I have uh, probably about two, 300 games played. You're going to get these matches, uh, even if it's just 1% of the time, even though I feel like it's a little bit more, uh, you're going to get these matches inevitably and automatically you're going to have a bias to make it feel like it happens a lot more than it really does. But here's the data for mid rank players, which it appears it didn't actually affect them that much from what they state. But again, uh, I felt like it did happen to me. It just really depends on what they consider medium rank. For me, I would consider, you know, probably gold to diamond as medium ranked. Um, and then here's the graph for the low rank players, which again would be you know, your bronze, silver, maybe a little bit of the low gold in there as well. Uh, and you can see that it did actually really affect their matches where they're getting, you know, teammates that maybe are a little bit lower than gold, you know, um, maybe bronze. And it's not just bronze sometimes, sometimes it's even low bronze. So I can understand if you're like one of those players and you really feel like you're in ELO hell. And it, it appears like that place actually does exist because the matchmaking has just been kind of wonky. So now you've seen the graphs, these are about where they stand as of March 6th. And now they're talking about some things that they're planning on doing moving forward. So kind of like most ranked games, the way that the matchmaker works is it tries to look for players as close to each other's MMR as possible. Now the problem with this is as your MMR increases, you're only going to end up on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of player population, meaning there's going to be less players around your MMR just naturally because most players aren't going to be, you know, within that top 10%. This is the top 10% for a reason. But as that happens, as the queue time 
continues to search and it continues to grow, it expands the players to a larger skill difference. So it's kind of one of those double-edged sword type things where if you want to have a shorter queue time, you have the potential to get a lot more offset and one-sided matches. But if you want more fair matches, you're going to end up with longer queue times, which was kind of the big problem that a lot of high elo players were complaining about in season two is having these super long queue times. I mean, a lot of players were even, you know, just scrolling through TikTok or watching YouTube videos while they were in queue because they had time to do that. But prior to season three, they had the ability to control the rate of expansion. So how far it was going to expand the search independently for each queue. But in season three, they changed how the matchmaker expands over time, but it removed some of their control over per queue behavior. What this meant is that if they wanted to reduce the size of the skill difference in competitive, that they had to do the same thing in unranked and arcade, which is kind of why a lot of people have been saying, yo, my queue times in arcade have been longer than they have been for competitive. And that's because unfortunately they had to change them both simultaneously for some reason. They continue by saying uh, if they wanted shorter queue times for unranked by expanding the skill difference and requirements, which would uh, again lead to more blowouts, they could do that, but then competitive would have a wider skill difference too, which in my opinion is where those spikes come from in the graph. But in the patch that they released on Tuesday, which was the mid-season patch, they implemented the first of a series of changes, which more will come in season four, that will give them the flexibility to tune these changes separately and gives them new control over to tuning the system. So what this means that they're now able to tune the MMR and the search and the matchmaker for unranked and competitive separately now. So now they can set the parameters on how wide the skill gap can actually be in competitive. They also state that this week they will be tuning these values to tighten up the skill gap as much as possible while trying to keep an eye out for queue times because as we said, as the skill gap decreases, as you shorten the pool of players that you're able to play with, you also end up inadvertently lengthening your queue time. And I know for myself, I would much rather have a queue time that is slightly longer, even if it's like three minutes per queue, uh, and having really good, solid, fair matches, than have, you know, really quick queue times and run the potential, even just the potential of getting a, a blown out or blowing someone out. I, I don't I don't like that either. I personally like matches where I felt like it was hard fought on both sides and then just one team just had the slight edge over another. But I do also recognize that once your skill does increase, that eventually it's going to lead to you carrying. So it's going to be kind of hard in that regard. But as long as everyone is still playing good, then I'm OK with that. But one other thing they added was in the midseason patch, they added the capability to sort parties together to have similar player deltas, which is the skill difference. Now, what they're going to do is try to get the delta between parties as similar as possible. And apparently this has also significantly resulted in reducing the queue times for parties. He ends the blog by saying that hopefully that this provides much needed context for all of you and helps you see the amount of work going into the system. However, your experiences are what really matter. We'll be collecting a lot of data this week and listening to all of you as well. I'll be providing some sort of updates soon, likely through Twitter. So if you're not following Aaron Keller on Twitter, I highly suggest it. This is where I got notified that he even posted the blog. But yeah, some pretty interesting stuff. It's really good to see, again, like I said, that they're even communicating this because many companies are really just out of touch with their base and just won't share this type of data with us. It's also good to see that they actually see the matchmaker themselves as a problem. I know that many games, a lot of times, will refuse to see something as a problem because of how much it could affect, you know, a large majority of their base. But overall, I'm just glad to see things being done. If you guys enjoyed today's video and you want to come back and see more, don't forget to like the video. And while you're at it, subscribe and turn on post notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video.